Seven Teenagers Visit Hell Together, Part 1 The Bible, the Word of God, is very clear about the subject of heaven and hell. The Lord tells us about two places, heaven and hell, the place of condemnation and the place of salvation. There is no intermediate place. Purgatory does not exist. Limbo does not exist. Where men stay for a while after they have departed from earth before they go to heaven. The Bible is very clear about this. On April 11th, 1995, God gave us a revelation that would change the direction of our lives. We had just begun to know about God and His Word. We are seven youth to whom God has given the privilege and great responsibility of sharing this revelation with the world. Everything started at approximately 10 a.m. We were praying and were prepared to go out on a picnic. Suddenly, a very bright white light shone through one of the windows. When the light appeared, we were all immediately baptized with the Holy Spirit, and we began to speak in tongues. When it happened, we were all astonished and fascinated by what we saw. The glorious light illuminated the entire room. It was much brighter than the light of the sun. In the middle of the light, we saw a host of angels dressed in white. The angels were very beautiful, tall, and very handsome. In the middle of the angels, we saw an amazing sight, the figure of a man. A man dressed in a pure white mantle and robe, whose hair resembled gold threads. We could not see his face because of the brilliance of the light. However, we could see a gold sash across his chest, with gold lettering that read, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He had pure gold sandals on his feet, and his beauty was without equal. When we saw him, we all fell to our knees. Then we began to hear his voice. It was extraordinary and wonderful. Every word penetrated our hearts like a double-edged sword. Just as is written in the Word of God, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. He spoke to us in very simple yet powerful words. We audibly heard him say to us, my little children, don't be afraid. I am Jesus of Nazareth. I have visited you to show you a mystery so you can reveal it and tell it to towns, nations, cities, churches, and every place. Where I tell you to go, you will go. And where I tell you not to go, you will not go. The Holy Bible, the Word of God, says in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, it shall come to pass after this that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, our old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. These are the times that God is preparing for all people. Then something strange happened. A rock appeared in the middle of the room. The Lord, who was with us, made us get on the rock. It was about eight inches above the floor, then, a large hole appeared in the floor. It was a huge, black, terrifying hollow or cavern. We fell on the rock and began descending through the hole. The hole was dark and led to the center of the earth. While in the gloomy darkness, we were very scared. We were so afraid that we said to the Lord, Lord, we don't want to go there! Don't take us to that place, Lord! Take us out of here, Lord! The Lord answered us in a very beautiful and tender voice. This experience is necessary so you can see and tell others. We were in a horn-shaped tunnel. We started to see shadows, demons, and figures moving about. We kept going deeper and deeper. In just a matter of seconds, we felt emptiness and great fear. We then arrived at some caverns, at some terrible doors like a labyrinth. We didn't want to go inside. There was a terrible odor and heat that choked us. Once we entered, we saw terrible things, frightful images. The entire place was engulfed in flames. In the middle of the flames were the bodies of thousands of people. They were suffering in great torment. The sight was so horrifying that we didn't want to look. The place was divided into different sections of torment and suffering. One of the first sections that the Lord allowed us to see was the Valley of the Cauldrons, as we called it. There were millions of cauldrons, 
laid on the ground with boiling lava inside. Within each one was the soul of a person who had died and gone to hell. As soon as the souls saw the Lord, they started to shout and scream. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, give me a chance to get out of here. Lord, take me out and I will tell the world that this place is real. But the Lord didn't even look at them. There were millions of men, women and young people there. We also saw sexually immoral and drunkards in torment. All of the people were shouting in very great torment. It shocked us to see how their bodies had been destroyed. Worms were going in and out of their empty eye sockets, mouths and ears and were penetrating their skin all over their bodies. This fulfills the word of God written in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 24. They shall go forth, they shall gaze upon the dead bodies of those who had rebelled against me. For their worm shall not die, nor shall their fire be quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all mankind. And also in Mark chapter 9 verse 48, where their worm never ceases and the fire is not put out. We were horrified by what we were seeing. We saw flames about 9 to 12 feet high. Within each flame was the soul of a person who had died and gone to hell. The Lord allowed us to see a man who was inside of one of the cauldrons. He was upside down and pieces of flesh were falling off his face. He stared at the Lord intently and then started to shout and call on the name of Jesus. He pleaded, Lord, have mercy! Lord, give me a chance! Lord, take me out of here! But the Lord Jesus wouldn't look at him. Jesus simply turned his back to him. The man started to curse and blaspheme the Lord. The man was John Lennon, the member of the demonic music group called The Beatles. John Lennon was a man who mocked and made fun of the Lord during his lifetime. He said that Christianity was going to disappear and Jesus Christ would be forgotten by all. However, today this man is in hell and Jesus Christ is alive. Christianity hasn't disappeared either. As we started to walk on the edge of that place, the souls extended their hands toward us and begged for mercy. They asked Jesus to take them out of there, but the Lord wouldn't even look at them. Then, we started to go through other sections. We came to the most terrible section of hell, the center of hell. There, the most intense forms of suffering are endured. The torments are so severe that they are beyond human comprehension. The people there were those who knew Jesus and the Word of God. There were pastors, evangelists and missionaries and all types of people that had once accepted Jesus and known the truth but had lived a double life. There were also backsliders. Their suffering was a thousand times worse than anyone else's. They were shouting and begging the Lord for mercy, but the Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26-27, for if we go on sinning willfully after acquiring the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer left any sacrifice for sins, but some dreadful anticipation of judgment and of a fierce fire that is to devour those who oppose God. Those souls were there because they preached, fasted, sung and lifted their hands in church, but on the streets and in their homes they lived in adultery, fornication, lying and robbery. We cannot lie to God. The Bible says to whom much has been given, much also will be required. Luke chapter 12 verse 48. God then allowed us to see two women who had been Christian sisters while on earth, but who didn't live a righteous life before the Lord. One said to the other, You cuss it rash, it's your fault that I'm in this place. You didn't preach to me a holy gospel because you didn't tell me about the truth. I'm now here in hell! They hated each other because there is no love, mercy or forgiveness in hell. There were thousands of souls who had known the word of God, but whose lives weren't clean before the holy presence of the Lord. You cannot play with God or the flames of hell, the Lord said. He also told us, My sons, all the suffering on earth concentrated in just one place is nothing. 
nothing compared with the suffering that a person experiences in the best parts of hell. If it is that terrible for those who suffer the least in hell, how much worse must it be for those in the center of hell who once knew the word of the Lord and walked away from it? Then the Lord told us that we could play with the fire on earth, but never with the fire in hell. We continued walking through different sections, and the Lord showed us many other people. We noticed that all the people there experienced approximately six different types of torment. There were souls tormented by demons with all kinds of punishment. Another terrible punishment came from their own conscience, which said, Remember when they preached to you? Remember when you heard the word of God? Remember when they told you about hell? And you laughed about it. Their own consciences tormented them, just like the worms that crawled all over their bodies, and like the consuming fire that was thousands and thousands of times hotter than we know. This is the reward that the devil has for those who seek him and follow him. The word of the Lord says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8 As for the cowardly, however, and the unbelieving, and the fearful, the murderers, the immoral, those practicing magic arts, and idolaters, and all liars, their lot is in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This is the second death. Next, the Lord showed us a man that had murdered six people. The six people were now surrounding him and were shouting at him, saying, It's your fault that we're in this place! Your fault! The murderer tried to cover his ears because he didn't want to listen to them, but he could not avoid listening since in hell all your senses are much more sensitive. Souls there are tormented with an intolerable thirst for water that cannot be satisfied in any way, like in the Bible story of Lazarus and the rich man. Luke chapter 16 verse 19 The rich man in hell wanted only a single drop of water. The word of the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 34 verse 9, The streams of Edom shall be turned into pitch, and her soil into brimstone. Her land shall become burning pitch. In that place, every soul was in the midst of the flames. People saw mirages of crystal clear rivers in the middle of the fire, but when they tried to reach them, the rivers turned into flames. They also saw trees with juicy fruit on them, but when they tried to pick the fruit, they would burn their hands, and demons would ridicule them. Then God took us to a section that was much worse than the other sections that we had seen. We saw the lake of fire and brimstone. On one side of the lake was a smaller lake. In the smaller lake were millions and millions of souls crying and begging the Lord for mercy. They said to him, Lord, please take us out of here, even for just a moment. Please give me the chance to get out. However, the Lord could not do anything for them because their judgment was already set. Among those millions and millions of people, the Lord allowed us to focus on a man, Mark, whose body was halfway submerged in the lake of fire. The Lord let us know and understand his thoughts. We were amazed by the things he said to himself in his thoughts. We learned an eternal lesson when we heard him think, I would give anything to be in your place right now. I would give anything to go back to earth for just one minute. I wouldn't care if I were the most miserable, sickest, most hated, or the poorest man in the world. I would give anything to go back to earth for just one minute. The Lord was holding my hand. Jesus replied to Mark's thought, saying, Mark, why would you like to go back to earth for even just a single minute? With a crying and tormented voice, he told Jesus, Lord, I would give anything to go back to earth for just a single minute simply to repent and be saved. When the Lord heard what Mark said, I saw blood come from Jesus' wounds. Tears filled his eyes as he said, Mark, it is too late for you. Worms are set for your bed. 
and worms will cover you. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11. When the Lord said this to him, he sank into the lake forever. Sadly, all those souls have no hope. Only we on earth have the chance to repent today and go to heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ. Click on the video to learn more about other testimonies on hell. Praise the Lord and to God be all the glory. If you are watching this for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to us and press the tiny notification bell so you won't miss our latest videos.